Hey, good afternoon all. Camelback Trading 2724 and the PickFuturesTrading.com. I'm coming to you this Saturday afternoon, about 3 p.m. Eastern Time. And I figured I'd recap the last three days that I missed. Um, this is Wednesday, Thursday. I'll show you Friday in a minute. Took off the last two or three days just to clear my head. Um, before I start, just listen. Whether you've been doing this a day, a week, a year... 10 years, no matter how long you've been doing it. I've been doing it 36 years. When you find yourself doing stuff that you know is wrong and you continually do it, it's time to take a step back. And you can take that step back for two, three days. You can take it for a week, whatever you want. You can take it during the day, just walk away and hit the reset button. It's very, very uh, healthy for both your financial reserve and your mental reserve. And that's what I decide to do. And believe it or not, over the last couple of days, you know, I did walk in and look at my screens every once in a while. But today I sat down, looked at them, did my homework, and saw from the outside in, really, trades that would have been good. Whereas if I was just staring at the screen all day, maybe I would have missed them. So let's go over what I see over the last three days and what I look forward to on Monday, which when I'll be back. So remember... We had an inside day on Tuesday, right? And when you come out of it, you go with it and monitor it for continuation or lack of. Well, Wednesday started with coming out of the inside day to the upside in three different time frames, right? But, right, C never got out of it. But you came back into it four times, A, B, C, D, even E. So you have buyers were having trouble. But value was higher on the, uh, eventually uh, on the day. E period was the total change in the tempo of the day. When you couldn't come out of the inside day or you kept coming out and failing, for me, there's no real trades there, okay? Because there's uncertainty, even though value was overlapping a higher at that time. But once E opened up, we continued the one time framing up that D started, came out of the inside day again for the upside, took out D. That was a sign that the inside day up was going to get some legs. And boy, did it get legs, right? As we ripped up an E period, then we bounced a good part of the afternoon before making new highs until week longs just puked it out for the end of the day. So that's what transpired on Wednesday. Now, Thursday and Friday, two very different days, even though they had ex basically exactly the same openings, okay? And what I would have done on both those days if I had been here. So both days gapped higher to all-time highs. Both days filled the gap literally within the first 10 minutes. That's filling the gap pretty quickly. So a lot of emotional buying initially and then flushing it out. But both days after that had totally different tempos to them and the way they acted and what, the way you should have acted trading them. So for example, on Thursday, if I had been here, <clears throat> the one trade I probably would have made and would have been the best trade for me on the day would have been an H period. And the reason for that was value was higher all day. So when we gapped higher and closed it, B was an inside period. Now again, you could have taken a buy once C took out B's high and we were still <clears throat> high, high value, even though the gap filled, odds were you're going to go test A's high, which you did. So you could have had a buy in C. But the one for me would have been when the market decided to shake out some weak longs, right? Once F couldn't take out E and we came down and G came down. The thing I'm looking for here is I don't want to see G have single prints after the time frame. So once G came back into the day's range, here's why I would have looked to be a buyer in H. Now, I'm not saying I'm a buyer in G. I mean, you could be the innovator, right? As long as you don't have single prints, you could have been the innovator once G got back in here. But you're still not sure at that point, right? But once H opened and never could take out B or A's low, let alone the day's low, that's where you could have been long. You knew you're out. You could have been out either below A's low or below the day's low. 
And why would I have been long, even over one time framing down? Well, number one, you know you're out. But more importantly, two things. We had higher value all day, and value is incredibly important. And number two, we were already six wide here, six out of seven wide. So if I bought it here, once it started coming up, especially once we stopped the one time framing down, well, now you're in good shape. You could take some off at POC, and then you could have taken the rest off at the value high. So that would have been a nice trade on Thursday. And here I'm buying it, looking for the market to go higher. And I'm going to explain what I mean by that between the difference of Thursday and Friday. Here with value high, here with six for six wide, the odds are you're not going to only go back to POC, but you might even test the day's high, which is what you did, right? Because we had been one time framing up. Totally different here on Friday. Friday opened. Drove down, filled the gap right away. But unlike Thursday where we made new highs in C, D, E, F, we never, never took out the day's high after A. In fact, we one time frame down the whole morning after gapping higher to an all-time high. Right? B tried and failed, so we had an inside bar. So you're still not sure, right? So now you have to wait for C. If C comes takes out A and B, well, then you're going higher. But what did C do? C had trouble getting over the opening, and then C took out B's low. D took out C's low. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to be an outright seller here, because at the time, value is higher on the day. But I will tell you, once we drove down, now, you could have taken a put play. When E took out A's low, you certainly could have took a put play. Because then odds were you were going to trade down to POC from the previous day. And it not only did that, but it drove down to the previous day's value low. So that would have been a good trade. However, if I was short, if I was short when, I took, when we took out A's low, I would have been taking some off at POC, and I definitely would have been looking to take some off at value low. If F period started going back up, which it did, obviously, because you see where G opened and where G never went down to, then I'm out of that trade, especially if you don't think there's going to be single prints. Now, the difference between these two days, here I'm looking to be a buyer because of the tone with the higher value, the six for six wide. Here, I'm not looking to be so much a buyer. Now, you could have bought it in G. But more importantly, I'm looking to be a seller now. Why? Because at that time now, value was overlapping to higher. And this day, all it did was one time frame down the whole day. <coughs> Excuse me. So that's definitely telling you something. So now, instead of looking for it to continually go up like I was here, here I'd be looking for the afternoon rally high, which I love to do. And Anybody who knows me, that's my favorite trade. Now, do I know the afternoon rally high is an H? No. Do I know it's an I? No, I do not, because I actually traded right at H is high. Now, I had come in around that time, and I was looking at the market. I was waiting to see, was H or I take out E's high and then go for the highs? The tempo of the market told me it didn't look like it was going to. So when J period opened, if I was trading Friday, when J couldn't get take out either H or I's high, and barely got above Thursday's high, that would have been a nice short. Why? You knew you're out. If you take out H or I's high and start getting acceleration, you're out. But that never happened. Not only didn't that happen, once you would have shorted it, and unlike Thursday where we were six for six wide and then became seven and eight wide, we weren't that wide. Value was starting to continually get dragged lower, Nothing even told you to get out of this trade in J, K, L, or M. Now, I'm not saying I would have held it the whole time, but it would have been a very, very nice short. Where would my outs have been? Well, if I had shorted it in J, well, maybe you think F's going to be the low, so you take some off here at G. Maybe you take it all off. Once K opens, it goes back up and fails again below G, you could put it back on again and write it down to at least value low. We almost had an outside day down after an all-time high. Very interesting. So a little crack in the armor on Friday. Value, you can't see in here, I'm on three tick increments, but value was oh, uh, unchanged on the day. We were both higher and lower than Thursday. So value finished unchanged. 
We also went out with something we haven't had in ages, a trend day down, believe it or not. It's only two single prints, but we have them. Just like we have single prints, believe it or not, from about a week or so ago to, that held to the upside. Those are the first ones that held since the end of October. So we actually have a trend day up and a trend day down that have held recently. Volatility starting to pick up. So now let's go over destinations and I'll show you the charts. So coming into Monday, we had a price probe, right? Made a new uh, low in the last half hour. So my first destination on the upside will be L's low, the base of it, at 325.74. Now, technically, this would have been a price spike when L took out F, but that's where the single print is. So it's the same thing. So the single print starts at 325.91 and gets filled at 93. Then we have the afternoon rally high at 326.89. Then we have weekly high and all-time high of 327.46, but our all-time high is now in the pre-market again at 327.74 from Friday morning. So we have no excess at the top, really, and we have the all-time high in the pre-market. So to me, that's unfinished business. Doesn't mean it has to get there tomorrow or next week or next year, but odds are at some point you will take that out. For the downside, and this is where it gets interesting, for me. First destination will be Friday's low of 325.20. My next destination below that isn't until the 8th low, until we get more market generated information of 322.67. So two and a half dollars lower. Now you might get a speed bump where we were eight wide. You might get, you know, something here at M's low. But your next true destination until we get more market-generated information on Monday is 322.67. Then we have the afternoon pullback low from the day before, 322.64. Shows you how important that was when we stopped there the, the, uh, the next day. Then we have 322.24 daily low, 322.14 afternoon pullback low from the 6th. And then the trend day, the single prints, 321.88 get filled at 75, and then 320.36 weekly low. So, let's go to the charts. And this is why I want to show you a couple of things. So monthly, one time framing up for two months. This is the third month, but obviously it's only a third of the way through. We still have the gap that's very healthy. So the monthly is up, our longest time frame. Weekly, and I put in some different lines here for a couple of reasons. Weekly is, I put on my homework, balance to up. And the reason I kept it balance to up is because we closed above the previous two weeks highs. If we had closed back inside of them, I would have just called it balanced and say we stretched the balance pretty good <laughs> by like $2. But I'm going to call it balanced to up. However, look at this trend line. Going back from late September. We've tested it one, two, three times. Right? We basically went straight up until we got this balance here. It took a while to get... The way I had that 287 was my line in the sand for so long. Well, this... This one around the 302.65 level and stuff would be the next one if we would ever get down there again. But right now we're healthy, right? It's in balance. Is the trend, is the auction getting long in the tooth? I've said that many times, right? You need to get distance away from previous highs. It looked like we were going to until the last, when we came in on Friday. And the daily... Same thing. We're in balance. Could have, we just missed an outside day down, which would have been bearish. But we are in balance. Again, all three time frames have gaps that have not been filled. So, this is the one thing, if I'm a bull, that you have to be a little concerned about.
there's kind of a vacuum below yesterday's Friday's low. Doesn't mean the market's bad. But what it means is, and I've said this many times, price will seek its level the way water seeks its level. So on Monday, if we cannot get back above where this price probe started, fill the single prints, and get back into this day's range, or if we do and fail at the afternoon rally high and come back down again, if at some point, whether it's failing up here or not even getting uh, above L's uh, low, you can get some acceleration to the downside. And until you get market-generated information, and that's two and a half dollars worth down to that three twenty-two sixty-seven level, and then at that level, you have four destinations: two daily lows and two afternoon pullback lows, all within a half dollar of each other. So those, you see how fast price can go down and get wiped out. So you can wipe all those out, and then you know where you're right back at: the six, the trend day, where the single prints held. And why is that important? Well, it's important to me for this reason. Those single prints get filled at 321.88 to 75. <clears throat> this trend day, uh, I'm sorry, this trend line on the weekly is right around that level. So if the sellers have any, if, if, let's put it this way, we haven't had sellers in over a year. And again, even if we get them and they do push it down to that level, that does not mean the market's bad, right? The monthly will still be up. But you can repair and shake out week longs and repair poor structure. And you can certainly trade down to that trend line, which is right around the 322 level. Now, is that what I'm looking for? I, I like to give both sides of the equation. For me to tell you, yes, that's what I'm looking for, and that's all I'm looking for, is silliness. I know a lot of people on Twitter and everything else say, yeah, I'm expecting a 15-point zipper down. That's all garbage. Market-generated information is going to tell you what's going to happen. If we gap low with $2 on Monday, well, guess what? We're there. Does that make me a genius? Absolutely not. It just tells you that the market was ripe to get some... Uh, poor structure repaired. If we open in balance and then take out the afternoon high and go to all-time highs, does that make me a genius if I tell you, oh, wow, you know, if we take this out, we're going to all-time highs? Of course not. Market-generated information is telling you if, you if you get accepted above the afternoon rally high from Friday, we're going to get new all-time highs. I just think the market, and I'm, again, I, I don't want to be biased but we've basically had so much energy put into the upside. And I think it's a little telling when you have two gaps two days in a row and they fill immediately. And Thursday was pretty healthy with the higher value and the way I was looking, I would have looked to have been a buyer. Whereas Friday, even though we hit an all-time high, the tone of the day was sell all day. All this was was some bottom fishing again looking for an afternoon rally high. So that's how I'm seeing the market going into Monday. I know this is a long video. I hope it helps. It certainly helps me reinforce things that I'm looking for. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great night, and I'll speak to you prior to the opening on Monday.